I'm with my friend, um, Adam Richardson, who is a detective with a, um, a law enforcement agency in Southern California. Hi, Adam. Hi, how are you? Good. And we're here talking today um, about, Adam has an awesome course and it's a writer detective school, but first I wanna go a little bit about his background and um, how this course came about. So Adam, you've been in law enforcement for 25, 26 years? Something like that. Yeah, definitely <laughs> more, more than 25. Yeah, long, long time. And a detective for 17, right? Yes. Okay. And, um, and you've, you've done a lot of stuff in those 17 and 25 years. So I, yeah, I've worked a variety of assignments. Uh, so I've been fortunate to have a lot of different experiences. That's great. And um, so you decided a long time ago, how did you decide? Because I know I met you way, well, I met you um, via email um, when I was getting your newsletter. And so how did that newsletter get started? So <laughs> backing up to back in 2015, um, my wife and I uh, joined some friends on a wine tasting trip, and some of them were in the um, entertainment industry, and one of them was a screenwriter. And uh, we, you know, were doing the wine tasting, just, um, you know, talking back and forth. And he was like, actually, I'm working on this script. And it's, you know, involves a cop and what would this cop do in this situation? And so you know, to me, it was a very quick answer. I don't even remember what the scenario was. Um, but because we'd been drinking wine, I didn't have the aha epiphany moment until the following day. Um, but that was when I kind of realized that writers might benefit from um, being able to talk to a cop and ask these questions or talk to a detective. And that was the beginning of me. Um, honestly, I just went on back then it was Twitter. So I went onto Twitter and started, you know, finding questions that writers were posting and replying to them. But then that was also the start of my own journey to learn more about the craft of storytelling, to learn how to um, understand what writers are going through when we're talking about, you know, plot points and progressive complications and character arcs and story arcs of, I mean, I've always been a fan of um, storytelling. I mean, I'm, I've been a voracious reader since I was a kid. I'm one of those annoying guys that can quote movie lines. Um, so, you know, coupling like really deconstructing storytelling, not that I have any skill in putting a story together, but I certainly have learned the language and learn what writers are trying to accomplish with their stories. So when someone's asking about, you know, the SWAT team approaching a house, I, I can reasonably guess that we're kind of coming toward the climax of a story or, you know, we're somewhere toward the end of a second act, beginning of a third act, potentially. Um, and by being able to understand what the storyteller is trying to accomplish, it makes it a little easier for me to kind of reverse engineer and, and help writers with that. So it's not just that I'm a detective and have experience, it's also um, making the effort to kind of learn the storyteller's language and, and what they're trying to accomplish. So that was the beginning of the journey in 2015. Um, and then, so once I started answering questions on Twitter, then it was, I started a blog back then uh, when blogs were the thing, posted a few uh, insights that I had. And then, you know, when you get your first, website up and running, there's the, oh, I should start a mailing list. And what am I going to tell people uh, through a mailing list? So, um, and that was when I started the mailing list, which is um, really just curating links that I think writers would be interested in reading. And a lot of that comes from my own, um, you know, as I go through my workday and I'm seeing you know, updates on cases and things that are occurring, or um, even just news stories that I think are fascinating about characters that writers could benefit from learning about. Um, anytime I see something in the course of my regular day, um, whether that's from emails or, or news stories or whatever it is, then I kind of put them aside and save them up each month and then uh, put those out as a, um, as in a single newsletter. Yeah. And that's, that's why I found you because I was Googling, I needed answers for a story I was writing. And it wasn't even a police procedural, but there was a situation in the story where someone had been, um, someone had come into a house and I needed to know what the police did when they came into this house, you know? And I saw your newsletter and 
I thought, okay, I'm going to email this guy. There's no way in heck he's going to even email me back. He probably gets a thousand letters a day. And you did. And I was so shocked because not only did you answer my question, but you gave me links to like <laughs> 10 different things so I could research it. And it, it was, it was awesome, you know, because I was able to do that scene and um, get information for, you know, more than enough, which research, writer research is one of the bane of our existence you know we have to do a lot of research so definitely so you did the um the newsletter and then you did a podcast which um you said that you will be putting out episode 118 mm -hmm. yeah Ready? so that's been that's been going for a couple of years now okay. um and, and I, I will also confess that I've been, um, I don't do this anymore, but I spent 12 years teaching at the uh, community college level. Um, so I have definitely have that collegiate hat and the, the, <laughs> the teacher thing where I like to support my arguments with, with uh, research, in fact. Um, and then I also spent time teaching at the California Department of Justice's school where um, when you are a police officer and you get promoted to detective, you get sent to a school to learn how to do that job. Mm -hmm. And so I taught at those schools for a lot of years uh, until the budget cuts actually eliminated that whole arm of the Department of Justice. But um, yeah, so I've definitely got a teaching background and uh, just try to make all of that content as relatable to writers as possible. And then you also, um, you have a Facebook group, which I'll put links to all of these um, in, in my, in the comment, in the comments area. But, um, but so all of this has progressively gone to you creating an actual course because, you know, you, you taught the course to people, you know, officers that wanted to be real detectives. And, but what you're doing for us, and I have to say, I was in the first cohort. So I speak from experience. I took this course. Um, it was amazing. And so what actually led you to teach this writer's detective school course? So as, yeah, so as I was as I've been helping writers over these last few years, one of the common themes was I just, you know, first was the the pain point of feeling like, you know, I don't know enough to be able to write the story that I want to tell. And then the other common statement, usually the thing that followed right after, right after that would be, I wish I could follow you around at work, or I wish I could be a fly on the wall, or I wish I could go on a ride along with you in the detective bureau, you know, whatever that would look like. And so it, it was another aha moment where it was like, I teach this stuff to cops. So it would not be a big leap to be able to take. And so when we when you go to this detective school as a police officer where you're learning to become a detective and do all of the stuff detectives do, you have um, your day is filled with, you know, typical lectures and learning. But at the same time, you're working a, you know, fictionalized investigation at the same time. So as you're learning a block about crime scene investigation, you're getting leads about your case that relate to, you know, CSI stuff. And then when you identify witnesses um, and you're doing a or learning about witness uh, interviews uh, or suspect interrogations, you're getting leads that relate to the case that your little group that you're a part of in this class um, relates to. And so I took that same learning model and really just kind of geared it toward writers where it's not so much on the really super technical like rules of evidence you know make you want to fall asleep kind of stuff but certainly the the major um, decision making points that you're going to make in a case of you know this is where we're at how do we prioritize what what are the things we're going to um what do we need to accomplish? Uh, what are the most important things to do right at this moment? Um, and basically, those are the same decisions that your characters and your stories um, are are contemplating, right? And as writers, sometimes we don't necessarily know, you know, what would this character reasonably do in this situation? What would they prioritize? Um, what's going to work best for the plot? What's going to work best for this stage of my character's arc? Um, but by being able to experience that firsthand as a student in this course where you get to go through like 
here's where we're at in the case. Um, what should we do? And a little bit of help from me, you know, and from the other students in the course as far as brainstorming what's possible and then really thinking about what's the most important thing to accomplish given the resources that we have. You know, do I do this and then farm out this to somebody else? Um, but just kind of be realistic about the way that we accomplish this and uh, how we go about getting unstuck when that happens. Um, so really that was the the aha moment was taking what I've teach to cops and, and uh, it, it was one of those things where, man, I should have thought of this years ago. So uh, um, no, but it's been a lot of fun. And that, and that's really the most, um, the best part of it is, I mean, it's almost to a certain extent, it's like a role-playing game. I literally sit here with, with dice on my table for when you guys come up with um, questions and stuff that I haven't anticipated. And, you know, just like a Dungeons and Dragons game, I got to roll the dice sometimes to figure out what's going to happen next. Uh, but it, it makes it fun. It makes it fresh. And um, hopefully uh, the the students find it engaging. It was engaging. I mean, I look forward to every single one of our um, actual investigative calls. And then on top of that, there was office hours calls, which I'll talk about that in a second. But so the class actually takes you on a homicide investigation from the 911 call all the way to the um, the arrest of the suspect. Mm -hmm. But we, I know we learned like probable cause and all these other things and and all these words that I didn't know. And, and I'm a cozy mystery writer, so I don't need to know most of this stuff because I have an amateur sleuth, but it's it was like backstory for me. I understood, so I mean, because police are, in my story and they come at certain times in, on the scene but the, the course gave me an idea of what was going through their main, mind why they would ask these questions why they would do certain things and it just it everything clicked and so you know whether you write cozies or gritty police procedurals i mean you'll get something out of this class and um one thing i wanted to mention was the office hours so we had our regular one hour or hour and a half or however long calls they were where we got uh, the investigation and figured out what was happening next and kind of like a 24 hour, you know, this is, this is going on. And then in the class, the other students, we all kind of brainstormed and got ideas. But then on top of that, we had these office hours. And I know for me, you know, you want to Google these questions. You want to like, you know, how does this, you know, you know, blood splatter, which, you know, I don't do, but there's a lot of questions you want to ask and you know that Google's probably going to like tag you and you're <laughs> going to have people at your door. And through your podcast, we can ask you questions. And even in your writer's detective Q&A Facebook group, we can ask questions. But this was zoom like this i mean we could ask you very specific questions and listen to the other students questions and take copious notes on everything and that alone was worth the price of the course you know? i appreciate that yeah i mean it's fun i mean yeah i do a lot of the q a's obviously that's so the podcast itself is me answering writers questions mm -hmm. and a lot of times those are very specific single you know ask a single question get a single answer or or it's one of those things where if i get the same question a second time or a third time i will use that question as an opportunity to do a deeper dive in a way that i didn't cover it previously on another podcast right if there's a question about having read your rights you know i may i I may get that question a couple times, but I will use that to kind of go in different directions each time. But with the office hours in the course, that's a chance for us together to be able to do that deep research, you know, or show you how I'm you know, literally getting on Google with you and um, kind of doing the deeper dive uh, and not just simple, like ask a question, get an answer, but also like, this is where I'm stuck. How can we reverse engineer this story? This is where I want it to end up. How can we make it reasonably get there? Like, what are the circumstances that would lead my protagonist to get to this place at this time in the story? Um, so we can do a lot more deconstruction, do a lot more deep dive. And because these are small cohorts, like we don't have a ton of people in the class, we can really get to know your story. Um, so it's not just, 
you know, I have a question about this scenario. It's, oh no, we, you know, we've been working on this for a couple of weeks now. So it's like, I know the character names, I know where it's set and, and, you know, the evolution of the story. So we do a much deeper dive with those office hours calls. Yeah. And like, when I mentioned my story, you already knew where it took place. I mean, you, you already had, and you would email me, you know, information that if you didn't have it that moment, you know, during the office hours. And plus, um, like you said, the class, the courses are small, the cohorts are small. And I got to know several people in the course and we're Facebook friends now. And, you know, there's a, there's a real camaraderie, not just with writers, but for writers of this type of, well, all genres, I'm sure, you know, I have a very close knit. So it, it's cool because you work with these people for so many weeks and you get to know them. And, um, and for all of us alumni, we get to come back for office hours um, once a month or once, whatever you decide, once every two months or something like that. So we can have all those amazing questions that we don't want to Google and come back and ask. Yeah. So yeah, for the alumni at minimum, it's once a month, um, kind of depending upon schedule. Um, But yeah, no, so it's ongoing support. So you still have that access. And and a lot of times it's kind of like a little class reunion as well. When we did it, it was great. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's that ongoing support. So even after that first six weeks of the, uh, of the cohort, um, then, you know, it's, we've learned all this stuff, you've got your book going or your screenplay or whatever it is. And now, you know, we're a couple of years later and you're on book five and it's like, you know, that every month you have that chance to come back and and ask questions and get that help. That's just amazing. So um, what's the biggest thing you want students to have a takeaway? What's the biggest takeaway you want for your students that take this class? That writing police procedure is absolutely doable. You know, if you look at the top people in the genre that are putting out, you know, all of, you know, the big names in the genre, they're not cops, you know, they're people who figured it out. And it's not this insurmountable genre. It is a tough genre to write in because on top of your, you know, the rules of storytelling, that craft, you have the additional layer of what cops will and won't do in these investigations. And I know that it can seem daunting, but that's the entire point of the course is to kind of learn. I mean, it's not rocket surgery, as they say, you know, it's, it's some pretty basic ground rules. And you learn those in this course, as far as, um, you know, what we go through the the process of doing this investigation, we do over and over again, in every single investigation, for the most part. So it's a repeatable process that once you understand it, it's going to make sense, and it's going to work in future cases. And if there are, you know, writers are so clever and they, you know, put their characters in all of these positions that, uh, you know, I hope to never find myself in, but we, (laughs) but we can certainly in these office hours calls, uh, figure out what that character realistically would do. Um, or if they're going to go off the reservation and do this crazy thing, what are the ramifications of that? And so, you know, that may inform that character's decision-making, um, or it could lead to, um, greater stakes in the story or just, you know, where they're going to end up in the next book in the series, as far as dealing with the ramifications of what they did in the previous story. Yeah. Now your class actually starts today, right? Mm-hmm. Today, March 1st. And <clears throat> so I know this, this video for whoever watches it right away. Um, how long are you keeping enrollment open for it? The, this, this one, this is the third cohort. Yes. So the cohorts are six weeks in length. This is 22-2 is the name of this cohort. So it's uh, year 22 and it's the, you know, 2022 and it's the second offering this year. Um, So enrollment will probably, I I mean, I'd be comfortable taking students through the end of this week. Um, All of the call, all of the investigative updates are, um, they're done live via Zoom, but they're recorded. So you do not need to be on live calls every time uh, in order to get, in in order to enjoy the course. I've had several students that uh, did it completely um, after the fact. They were not on any of the live calls, but they still really enjoyed the course. Obviously, you get a lot more out of it if you are live because you get to help steer that investigation. Um, But we do have a a community. It's almost like a private Facebook group, but without Facebook, without Zuckerberg. Um, So in the course (laughs) software, uh, we have our own private little chat that uh, is ongoing um, for 
not only working the case, but also asking questions uh, from me and then also the other uh, writers that are in the course. Um, but uh, yeah, I totally lost my thread going off on that tangent there. Oh, you're going to uh, take probably till March 4th. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. About that. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, realistically, it's uh, the very first week is just kind of laying out what's happened so far and brainstorming uh, the initial ideas on where we're going to go from here. So, um, yeah, it's it, you have not missed nearly, you know, nearly anything at this point at the, um, for the very first session. Um, just watching the replay of it will get you up to speed immediately. Um, and there are um, like one or two little things you uh, assignment wise that yes. you can complete. And, there are assignments, too. Yeah. Um, they're not but horrible, so the, but they're good. <laughs> yeah. So, the I mean, they're all there for a reason. They're all there for learning. Um, but the first week is is really easy lifting. And uh, it's certainly not like a college, like a proper college course where you're dreading writing assignments or anything like that. Everything has a purpose you're going to learn. And uh, um, I won't say it's an easy A, but uh, most people get an A in the course. <laughs> <laughs> There's no grade book. <laughs> well, learning how to write a search warrant and all that kind of stuff, that was really helpful too. It was kind of scary, but I mean, you provided all the blueprints and everything. So we knew what to do. Um, so cohort three, it's probably not going to happen until the fall. I mean, number four, sorry. Uh, so it would be 22 dash yeah, three. So it would be the, the, yeah, third the third one for off. this year probably Correct. won't happen until the fall. Yeah. So you were in the founding cohort. So yeah. that was 21 dash one. So, uh, we wrapped up 22 dash one. Um, it was, no, it was uh, right yeah. before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Started so then, October first to almost Thanksgiving. Yep. So then we did uh twenty two dash one and now twenty two dash two is the current one that's starting this week. Uh so the third one probably will not happen until um early fall or late summer at the absolute earliest. Um hopefully if the the world is still in one piece, we'll uh <laughs> be doing some traveling in the summer. Um, and I've got some other plans to, uh, of things I'd like to accomplish between now and the next, next cohort, but, uh, we'll definitely be doing one in the fall sometime. So it, whoever can't get in now, or they see this later, there's still a chance at the end of the year, probably at least for one more, but if you can get in now, it, it's great because then you get all those office hours and all that other good stuff too. So anyway, Adam, thank you. I, uh, appreciate, um, you know, our chat. And um, likewise, thank you so much for having me.